all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's examine problem 111A, computing ROI and residual income. So it says the CEO of Grace Company, Nicole Grace, is debating an investment. The investment is projected to earn $20,000 annually and will require the company to acquire, require to acquire, that's a mouthful, $100,000 in assets. The following chart summarizes Grace's decision. So before the investment, they've got 75 grand in operating income. This new investment makes them 20 grand. And... Uh, before the investment, they had 300 grand in, in uh, average operating assets. After the investment, of course, they'll have 100 grand more, so 400 grand. Um, okay, so it says assume Grace is being uh, evaluated based on growth in the company's ROI, which we said, yeah, that's a common summary measure to use, uh, return on investment. So she's being measured based on whether her ROI is going up or going down. So will she take this deal or should she? Well, let's compute the ROI before and after. So the ROI before is 75 grand is the operating income divided by the average operating assets, 300 grand. And when we talk about operating assets, we're basically talking about most of a normal company's assets outside of maybe some investments in other companies. Like those are passive assets, but most assets that you think about for a company, most that we've looked at in this class would be considered operating assets. So it's often average assets, uh, but average operating assets is 300 grand. So 75 grand divided by 300 grand is... 0.25. So 25% is her ROI before the deal. If she takes the deal, it becomes 95 grand divided by 400 grand. 95 divided by 400 is 0 0.2375, 23.75%. So uh, should she take the deal? Well, you know, on the face of it, if you could make a deal that would make your company 20 grand a year, you would take it. it generally, it's, it well it depends on the, the overall look of the company, but seems like on the face of it should be a good deal. However, if I were Nicole and I wanted to maximize my bonus, absolutely not, right? Taking this deal is bad for her bonus. So this is a place where ROI gets very criticized as a measure. If a, if a firm or a part of a firm has a really high ROI, they might not make smart investments, good investments, just because it might bring down their ROI a little bit. In other words, they need something that's not only profitable, they need something that's more profitable than the things we're already doing. And it causes companies to get greedy and to pass up what would otherwise be seen as good opportunities. Um, so I would recommend based on just the bonus situation that Grace pass up the investment. Assume Grace is valued based on growth in the company's residual income. The company's required rate of return is 15%. Compute the company's residual income. So remember how this one works. We take the uh, operating income minus, and then in brackets, average operating assets times the required rate of return. And this is just like, look, if the company is going to outlay assets it better be making 15% on all of the assets that it puts out there, knowing that there's risk that it'll make less and hoping to make more. But when it plans, it says, look, this investment, whatever we invest in, it had better make us 15%. So operating income minus average operating assets times uh, 15% required rate of return. 
So then that's just the one for this company. It might be different for different companies. So the operating income, 75,000 minus the average operating assets, 300,000 times 15%. 300,000 times 15% is 45 grand. So 75 grand minus 45 grand is 30 grand. That's the residual income before, right? That's the info before. Let's take the residual income after, which is 95,000 minus, and then it's 400,000 times 15%. 400,000 times 15% is 60,000. So 95 minus 60 is 35,000. So using residual income, you can see that her residual income would have increased from 30 to 35 grand. If residual income is going up, you take the deal. And in this case, she should take the deal if residual income is being used uh, to measure her. But I, I hope you're seeing that the issue with ROI here is that, look, we may pass up really good investments, investments that our company would want us to make just because we want to keep that percentage up. Residual income gets us past that. So residual income uh, is, is a better summary measure, in my view, than ROI because it, it doesn't have this uh, uh, weird really issue related to it so it says give at least one advantage and or and one disadvantage of using summary measures like roi and residual income uh, to evaluate company performance well as you've seen this problem i mean i've gone through a and b and it wouldn't be that much it wouldn't take that much longer to do for a real company like we could look up a real company and do a similar calculation in you know under five minutes right it's cheap it's quick it's easy and it does a pretty good job measuring performance. You know, you want to know how a company's performing? A summary measure, they call it a summary for a reason. It summarizes how the company has performed in, in one quick, simple measure. So that's the advantage. Disadvantage we've seen sometimes it can cause people to behave in a way that's not congruent with what the company should want. So it, it can cause strange behaviors. Also, it can cause people to get very, the word is myopic, where they only look at what they're measured on. So if I'm measured on operating income minus average uh, operating assets, I might really just focus on either the, the one side or the other, either maximizing my operating income or measure, minimizing my assets. You might say, well, that's not bad, right? I want companies to maximize profit. Well, within reason, you know, this can certainly drive people to do things that are borderline unethical or even unethical in terms of, um, uh, you know, trying to meet targets or trying to exceed targets. They, they don't always behave in an honest way when the targets are so obvious, like, okay, all I need to do is increase profit. Well, uh, it can definitely lead to unethical behaviors. Um, other disadvantages here, well, both of these ROI and residual income tend to be backwards looking, right? They're, they're looking at accounting data. Accounting data is driven by past performance, not future performance. So those are a couple of big drawbacks. I, I think I've given a couple of advantages here as well. Okay, that is it for problem 111A. Stay tuned for the next video.